Okay, so let's do the live demo uh, of that. Uh, let me see. Okay, so I would like to. So inside, like we have the prefer.school.io. So if you are uh, included inside the uh, inside the whitelist, so you can be access to that. Uh, you can go to like a guide. Uh, which give you some instructions of how to use the test and how to play with us you know, step by step. Uh, and then, so before, like a, uh, when the first time you join the, the test end, you will need to go into add all of these configurations to your MetaMask so that you can be able to switch between different uh, scroll layer one and scroll layer two. And then we have some example USDC tokens like deploy on the layer one, both on layer two, uh, so like that. So, and then the first thing you're going to do is like, you're going to open this faucet application. Uh, let me see if I okay. So you can just uh, request one Ethereum and the 100 uh, USDC uh, token on the layer ones, and it will just show up oh. uh, to like transaction hash. Like you're going to issue those tokens from the faucet account. So here we already have like some of the uh, or I already requested something like that. It will just uh, it will like show up after like the about 15 seconds. I will just receive a new like the. Uh, one Ethereum and a 100 USDC token. And then that request only, uh, you can only request once, like every 24 hours. Uh, if you do that again, I could just show up some error. And then the next thing you can do is trying to, so that token is issued from the, uh, on the scroll layer one. So the next thing you need to do is you want to experience the layer two, so you just should deposit, transfer that token you receive on the layer one to the layer two, uh, which you can use this bridge application that going to see, uh, you can see like I want to transfer two Ethereum uh, to the oh, sorry, to, to, to Ethereum to the scroll layer twos, and then click on send. Oh, so I am not using the correct yeah. So now I'm on the scroll layer one, so you can send the scroll uh, the Ether to the uh, layer twos, and click on send, and then confirm. So we are going to see a pending transactions here, uh, like after a few seconds. And then, okay, so you can now see this transaction has been confirmed, which you can view on the blog explorer. So yeah, sometimes the blog explorer just uh, yeah, takes a, a few seconds to show up on the blog explorer. So, and then, so you can see now this transaction has been confirmed by one block. And after this, you see like that this number goes up to six blocks, then that means like you, the, the fund you transfer from layer one to layer two will be show up on your school layer two uh, address account. So I previously transferred two uh, Ether tokens. That should have not been shown up on the layer two. So currently I only have 1.3 uh, Ether here on the layer two account. But probably like after uh, like one, uh, probably two to three more minutes, and then it will just show up like it will becomes the uh, becomes like three tokens, uh, uh, three Ethers on my layer two account. Um, and then so let's see like that. So let's not wait for that time, and then we can go back and then. So we can just uh, play with the like swap. It's also like quite straightforward. You already have some ETH and you just swap. Oh, sorry, you select a token, USDC. So I can swap one Ether for the USDC. That would be kind of standard as the, what you do on the unit swaps. So now I will just uh, submit that transaction here. It will probably show another uh, pending transaction here. Okay. Um, I think next thing like you can sh uh, play with, you can see is the the rollup explorer. So there's a few more transactions actually. So people actually are playing, still playing with the test net. So you can see like there's how many transactions here for the latest blocks. Um, there will be like a few uh, like the transactions. So you can see the latest two transactions probably uh, those two blocks like which I was just submitted. So they will be still at the pre-committed status. And then there will be like the, the there will be relayer is going to keep updating like sending the new uh, transaction uh, the commit transaction to the layer ones and after that transaction has been confirmed then uh, you can see it will be like the com commit it will becomes like committed after a while so probably it's still waiting for the layer one uh, to be confirmed those transactions so these are some transactions already sent it to the uh, to the layer ones uh, and then like the uh, because we don't have oh there's a lot of transactions <laughs> okay. <laughs> Because I think we, right now we don't have enough uh, provers on the back end. So there are probably like a few, yeah, you can see like there's a few uh, blocks has been finalized so that you can see this finalized, both finalized transaction hash and then the commit transaction hash. Um, and that will be uh, switched to the finalized status. And then because we don't, uh, right now at the testnet, like uh, we don't have enough frame power so that we 
selectively, like that just prove LA, uh, like one in every two blocks. That one block will be skipped. Skip it just mean like we, we just uh, punt on the uh, generating the decay proof for that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, there are probably like one more demo I can show. Like the uh, I don't have like time, so uh, we can actually uh, very soon like we're going to support the con uh, arbitrary like the contract deployment. So right now we still have only a few pre-deployed contracts, but very soon we have like the new functionality support to support like uh, to allow you to deploy any contracts you, you can do. So so right now I can show you like some examples. So I'm actually uh, modifying a little bit on the scaffold ease, like uh, which is a great tutorial that by the That's Austin. Great. Uh, did like that. So actually, I was running this uh, scaffold ease on my own laptop and connect to the school layer too. So which means you can deploy contracts. So what you can do, like you just do uh, yarn start uh, in the scaffold ease. So I did that some modification uh, in a, a new branch. So that is connected not to the local node but to our uh, layer two node. So now you can see on the yeah, it will just initialize a website. Which you can deploy uh, debug things, and then so I previously tried that. So you can call like the uh, yarn deploy. Uh, so currently, like uh, just the original example have inside uh, the scaffold is, uh, which have like a very simple uh, example contract you can interact with. So now you can call yarn deploy. Uh, okay, so your first compile the contract you have inside the things, and then it's deploying the smart contract. And I'm waiting for the contract has been confirmed. Okay, now it's deployed. So if we copy this transaction hash and uh, open inside the, the layer two scans dot scroll dot io, and then you can search for that transaction. Uh, yeah, it'll probably take a few seconds to. Actually, the the this boss call usually takes it has some delay to show up the latest transactions. So. Yeah. Okay, yeah, see, this is the, the latest contract creation I just deployed on the score layer two, which is like already success. And then if you go back to this, and then so you can see this new contract has been deployed on the, on the layer twos. And then which you can also interact with this contract you just deployed on the score layer two, which you can say I can spot like the, oh, score layer two. Okay, now I can just call send. And I'll just interact with the, see like I'm connected to the score layer two now. Uh, just sending this confirm, uh, transaction through my MetaMask, and I click on confirm. So I just say like the okay, this transaction has been sent, and then let's just refresh. Yeah, so you can see like this uh, transaction has been uh, already updated. This purpose like the uh, string inside your smart contract, uh, and then later up like you probably show up like the after the prover catching up on this, like you can then see uh, those blocks will be finalized, and then generate some CK proof too. Uh, around like all of those blocks we just generated. Okay, uh, with that, that's like all of the demo I have. Like the, and then thank you very much. Um, if you have any questions, like actually feel free to ask. You can like have probably one or two questions if you I have. have yeah. Um, have you tested the case where verification fails and you need to roll back? Uh, usually I think like the, that means like uh, there's some bug inside ZK even circuit. So if like the. Uh, someone just made a, like your, Uh huh. Did something malicious or something? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So I think like right now we are still uh, operating under the assumption like that the we have like a centralized sequencers. That means like we are not malicious ourselves. But I think in the future like if something like the has been malicious, then I think like the we are going to have like this proof generation part will be working inside the prover, so that prover doesn't need to trust the traits that are generated by the sequencers. So that you just need to operate on the transaction data like this people send out. And then you generate the, the, the trace by the prover itself. So that if the, the sequence is correct, then you should be able to generate uh, like a valid uh, validity proof for that. That makes sense? OK. Yeah. Uh, is there any economic incentive for any reward network? Uh, we're still like working on some more details, so just like uh, uh, but just like the, uh, keep updating on that. So I haven't finalized the, all of the details of the incentives. Yeah. Oh. Um, so for the, the bridging, I guess from L1 to L2, you just have a trusted relayer that, like, and then from L2 to L1, have you set it up so that you have to do like 
the Merkle proof to withdraw from them? Yeah, there will be some Merkle proof okay. associated with the layer two exit. Yeah. Do you have a plan for what you're going to do from layer one to layer two? Yeah, I think I will also probably do, do that. Like once you have the decentralized uh, sequences, you probably cannot trust anything like that. So you should have uh, some proof to from layer one to layer two deposit. Uh, yeah, it could be like a little bit tricky because you need to have some data like you, you have, yeah, like you think of like some proof like the st state from the layer one to layer two. But I think I was just considering like the research about that. Uh, does Grove have a plan to do the recursive uh, proofing? Yeah, the aggregation is kind of like a one way people call it for the recursive. So basically recursive is basically you verify the, your proof inside a circuit. Yeah, but just people have kind of different naming for that. Uh, batches actually. So so right now it's we pro processing on the block level like this. So each block you can have a, a block have uh, could have multiple transactions. Uh, so the coordinator selects like a set of block or a set of transactions. Sorry, what? Uh, the coordinator selects a set of transactions. Uh, the coordinator will just uh, basically receiving the new execution trace from the sequencer. So every sequ like once the sequencer generates a new block, it will also generate some execution trace and it will just send to the coordinator. L2. Uh, L2 to L1 bridging. Oh, L2 to L1 bridging. OK, yeah. I uh, can switch back a little bit. So the L2 to L1 is like the someone just send a <laughs> transaction to the L2 bridge contract. And that bridge contract will just emit uh, an event. Uh, and then also, like the, it will send like, uh, some proof like associated with that transactions. And then the relayer basically already received uh, this event from the, uh, from the blocks contract. Uh, the bridge contract, sorry. The bridge contract. And I will wait for like it, it will know like which the uh, the withdrawal transaction will be show up in which block. And we're waiting until that block has been finalized on the layer once, and then it will send all of the withdrawal transaction like withdrawal uh, messages to the layer one bridge contract with along with some of the proof uh, associated with each withdrawals. And then the layer one bridge contract will verify the proof with uh, all of the withdrawals, uh, and then you will. Actually, for all of multiple, if there are multiple withdrawals within the single block, it will just call multiple transactions to transfer funds from the bridges to users' account. So the L1 transaction is initiated by the relayer, not the DOA. Yes, yeah. So I think like that would be have a better user experience. But we need to estimate some fees when you call the withdrawals. Estimate like the how much fee will associate on the layer ones to uh, do the transfer. Uh, uh, sorry, L2 to L1? The frequency, no, it, it, it's just like the waiting, like it, once like the, the block has been confirmed for that, that contain, if like a block in the layer two block contains a withdrawal transactions, they'll wait until that block has been finalized on the layer ones, so that the relay will can send out the, uh, all of the withdrawal transact, withdrawal events inside that block to the layer one. Uh, that's a good question. So actually, the layer two blocks, uh, the limit is not on the gas. Yeah. It's usually limited by the circuit size, well, how many transactions or how many steps we can include in the, in the circuit. So if you have a larger circuit, that means like, you have higher gas limit. Uh, but if you have a smaller circuit, then you have a like, smaller uh, gas limit uh, you can process on the, uh, inside the block. Yeah, uh, that's also another great question. So yeah, there will be something like the, so we probably still take like the, the most of the gas model from the extreme, but with some minor trick. For example, some certain simple opcode that could be resulting in a great overhead inside the circuits, we'll probably turn, tune up a little bit on the gas cost for that opcode. But usually I think like that, uh, the existing gas cost model is pretty good like, enough for most of the operations you have.
Yes, yeah, so it's like still kind of like uh, inside of the research. We have some initial analysis found for some of the, uh, like the SHA-3 catch-up of code could be like a, uh, a little bit uh, cheaper, like the, uh, in perspective of the, the ZK uh, proofs. Uh, and then there'll be found for some external code size of code hash, could be like the a bit cheaper. So you need processing uh, all of the contract code you have and then do the, some hashing on, to on top of that, so yeah. But having like the, kind of fully, like there definitely will be some security concern, we just also need to think about all of those different aspects. Um, okay, so I think I'll just end up now, because we're really over, a little over time. We can have like a, a 10 minute break, and then we can come back to the second session, where Ying Tong is going to talk about Halo 2, and Mason is going to talk about ZKUM architecture. All right, thank you everyone. <laughs>